Hey folks, it's Rich Mac here, and welcome to our second leg of our Around the World journey. We are in Ithaca, New York, and we are headed to... Hey, who the hell's that? I forgot I had live traffic in. Piedmont, forty nine ninety four. Look at that. Anyhow, that's live traffic right there. I caught me by surprise. Um, so, <laughs> uh, we are in Ithaca, New York, and we are headed to Glens Falls, New York. Um, about an, it's going to be about an hour flight. And as you can see, uh, beautiful weather here. Back up here. Still got to figure out the camera controls. Uh, beautiful weather here today. Let's get in the plane. Let's get moving. It's all set up and ready to go. At least the parking brake. Why a little throttle, or in this case, a lot of throttle, because it does seem to take quite a lot to get these things moving. Here we go, and uh, just bear with me while I run over the ground crew and their equipment. There's no way to move them. Sorry, guys, don't take it personally. Uh, we'll taxi down here, and while we're doing so, um, the first flight, the first leg from uh, Doylestown to Ithaca, I had some audio issues. The audio was stuttering in and out. I believe I found out that problem, and I have that corrected now. I apologize for that. And we're going to take this kind of fast. Yeah, we're going to take it really fast. Hold on. Jeez. I'm afraid to slow this thing down too much. But pretend I didn't do that. Uh, just because it's a real pain in the butt to get moving. Yikes, I took that fast. Okay. Oh, my, my taxi lights on. So, again, I have everything set up here. I think I now have my audio problems fixed. And let's get up to Ithaca. No, wait, I'm in Ithaca. At the Glens Falls. Is this Alpha? I don't think I need to go all the way down. Yeah. We'll, we'll hop on a runway at Alpha here. I don't need the whole length of the runway. Oh, shoot. Pretend I'm not doing this. There's one thing I forgot. We're just going to pump up the fuel here real quick. I should have done that before we started, and I forgot. And flaps on takeoff. And again, now we came to a stop, so it's going to take some effort to get moving. Some effort to get moving. A lot of effort to get moving. down a runway real quick make sure nobody's coming be forgetting I've got live uh, live traffic so <clears throat> kind of mess up my day if I pull down in front of someone and while I was messing around with that I didn't realize what I came to stop again yeah someone needs to look at this I'm up to 40% throttled and not even moving it's like it's almost like I've got chocks on And then what'll happen is it's just gonna take off on me. Okay. There we are. And everything's set up and ready to go, so I'm just gonna roll right through and take off. In fact, here we go. Positive rate. 
gear up. Ah, shoot. Bad form, forgot my lights. <clears throat> Fly this manually for a little bit. The lake. Gotta watch the autopilot because a lot of times it just tries to kill you. And oh, all right, and I screwed up there. So it's in roll mode right now. So right now the aircraft is just going to do lazy circles in the sky. If you look at the. Uh, the display here, uh, just below where it says K-I-T-H, uh, it's got R-O-L, uh, that's roll. So what I want to do is I want to hit the nav button, and it's going to send me back to GPS. That's going to put me on my flight line, back on track. And it's not going to want to stop me at 3500 so I've got a manual hit altitude and luckily I hit altitude right at 3500 so it's going to capture that altitude and keep me there let's go outside and take a look though this is where the real show is one last look at Ithaca that's that ridge over there you fly it I flew over on the approach Lake. Sun peeking through the clouds. So I forget if I told you already, but it's 9 a.m. in the morning. Again, our first flight out of Doylestown this morning, and the first leg was at 7 a.m. And this one begins at 9 a.m. See local time 9 11 48. We are 3,500 feet and we are now cruising. I'm going to drop the throttle back. Take a look here, real quick. A little closer. Throttle right now sitting at around 70%, and that's fine. Looking good, except somebody has still got his flaps down. Now we're gonna raise those flaps up. The takeoff wasn't one of my finer moments, that's for sure. A little bumpy. See the plane rocking all over. Look at that scenery. See through the volumetric clouds. Shadows off those ridges. That's beautiful. That's just amazing. I want to jump back in real quick because there's one thing I want to look at. I just want to double check and make sure that I did. 
Yeah, yeah I do have the arm out first set up. Okay, I just want to make sure that was set up that way. Go back out. So again, the game plan for the around the world trip is most of my flights will be around 3,500 feet or so. Um, if there are any elevations that I have to go over, of course I'll adjust that. But I think at this level, you know, you just get a real good view of the, the scenery and the world, and, and that's what I'm doing this for, just to see the world. And uh, I've got a couple of long flights over water, of course, to get over the Atlantic, Pacific. Uh, those I'll probably go to a higher altitude. Uh, the DA-62, I think, can safely cruise at around 14,000 feet. Um, it's not pressurized, by the way. Uh, and I don't know. I haven't actually taken it up that high in here. But if you look down here, uh, there's an oxygen tank in the bottom left, that green round thing. Uh, and if you pull on that, it'll set your oxygen so uh, you can actually breathe when you're above, uh, I think it's around 11,000 feet where it really becomes a problem. But anyhow, on um, for the ocean crossings, yeah, I'll definitely go up to around uh, 14,000 feet. It'll save a lot of fuel. It's much more efficient at that altitude. Um, other than that, though, most of these jumps are 150 to 250 miles, so I'm not going to bother. I'll stay low and just enjoy the sights. Uh, the trip is going to... I'm not going to give out the details of the trip, really, uh... You know, each episode, you, know, you can find out where we're going. Uh, just, you know, my little surprises. Uh, there are a couple of uh, special stops along the way. Um, in general, though, we'll hit every continent. I went to... I still haven't decided about Africa yet. As far as the, the original plan I had was to, to go down to Cape Town. And then all the way down the east coast, and, or down the west coast of Africa and back up the east coast. Uh, changed my mind in X plane just due to ortho limitations. I was running out of disk space, so I cut across equatorial Africa. I may change that now. I may I may go back down to Cape Town and back up. I haven't decided. Uh, again, I'll, I'll I'll cut across uh, Asia, we'll go to Australia, back to North America, South America. We're gonna get everything. Uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a long journey. And I've got it broken down like as you see in this flight now. It's 9 a.m. in the morning. I tend to, I've, I've got it set up so every day I would start at 7 a.m. and try to end around 5 p.m. Um, so it limits it to around usually four, I think, to four to five flights a day. But it should be a lot of fun. Really bouncing up and down in turbulence. I don't know what it looks like from the inside. And it's shaky in here. farmland just looks so lush. Not that I'm going to do it now, but I can't wait to uh, get some chances to fly over this kind of country uh, in the winter time and see it with the snow on the ground. That's going to be cool. So I think I may have said this before, but I'll say it again. Um, my flight controls 
I'm using uh, for a yoke, I'm using a CH Products yoke. I know it's kind of an older one, not really supported by the game. It, uh, it had to be manually, I manually set it up. At first it was a little daunting, but once I got the hang of it, it really wasn't that hard. Um, My rudder pedals are also CH product. Same thing. Once I figured it out, pretty easy to set up. I'm satisfied how everything's working. In the long run, I uh, I want to get a honeycomb uh, yoke and uh, the honeycomb uh, throttle quadrant. I'm struggling with words tonight. I can't figure out how to talk. Look at that valley, by the way. That's really cool. Sorry, the ADD in me, I can't stop. So anyhow, um, the only problem with uh, getting the uh, the honeycomb products is that you know most people I see typically, well, of course, right now they don't have a choice because the throttle quadrant, quadrant is not out, but uh, I, everybody's getting the, uh, the yoke and then the throttle quadrant. I probably will do it backwards. I will probably get the throttle quadrant and then the yoke later uh, because with the CH products yoke, my throttle lever is built into the yoke. So if I started off with just a honeycomb yoke, then I won't have a throttle lever, and uh, that would be a problem. I could probably plug in this yoke on the side, so literally I would have two yokes plugged in and, and not use the CH product yoke and just use the, the throttle lever on it, but that would be kind of weird and take up a lot of space on my desk. It would be awkward. So I think what I'll do is first I'll just get the honeycomb throttle quadrant, and then just stop using the throttle quadrant on my yoke here. And then when I get the chance, I'll, I'll get the honeycomb yoke later. Because they both look like amazing products. And I could probably buy them both at the same time, but I just don't want to incur that expense. Unless they happen to offer some kind of great deal, buy both of them together, then I, then I might do it. I'll have to think about it. As far as my system goes... I'm running an i9-9900 CPU, so my CPU is fine. I'm not worried about that at all. My graphics card is an RTX 2080, uh, not a TI, just a regular 2080. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy with it, very happy with it. The only thing in my system I'm a little concerned about is my RAM. When I built this computer, I cheaped out and only went with 16 gig of RAM. So, what I want to do is I want to swap out my two sticks of RAM for probably uh, two 16 gig sticks to get myself 32 gig of RAM. And then my motherboard will take four sticks eventually, or in total. So eventually I just get two more sticks of RAM to make it 64 gig total. But I, I really, I think I really need to uh, upgrade my RAM sooner rather than later. The, uh, the game itself is installed in an SSD. It's a one terabyte SSD. I think that'll hold the game and, and you know, most add-ons for now. Any aircraft that eventually come out, any scenery I want to get. And if I start running out of space on the one terabyte one, I, I probably get a two terabyte or, you know, hopefully SSDs will be cheaper in a couple of years and I can maybe get a larger one and just transfer everything over. Game settings, I think most of my game settings are on high. I have a, some that are on medium. Clouds I have on ultra. I think if I, uh, if I especially if I uh, upgrade my RAM, I could probably start moving most of my settings up to high. My monitor is a 1080 monitor. The uh, widescreen monitor, the uh, the ultra widescreen monitor, as you can see in the aspect ratio of the, the video I'm uploading, I'm going to leave it in that aspect ratio. But uh, being a 1080 monitor, you know, I, I can run things smoother. If it was 1440 or, or HD, 4K, I mean, then I, I probably would really be struggling with the high-end settings, especially with 16 gig of RAM. 
I'm still kicking myself because I cheaped out on the ram. Stupid. game is telling me I just unlocked an achievement. Look, Ma, no hands. I'm so excited. Don't know what that means. But I'll take it. I do notice that sometimes you look down on the roads and there's a lot of traffic and other times there's none. I don't know if the game can take into account side roads and main roads and apply more traffic to the main roads. Like right now, these, well, there's a little bit of traffic on that. It's like a small road. Cloud shadows on the ground. A really cool effect. Just the lighting, the atmospheric lighting is amazing. Pretty big wind farm. And for now, while I'm in flight, I've given up on the drone cam. Because as soon as I hit the uh, the insert key to bring up the drone cam, the plane just pitches up straight up 90 degrees. And I don't know how to correct that. I, I think it's just a glitch, just a bug. I, uh, I thought that perhaps, um, well, I'll back up. The drone cam I have controlled with an Xbox controller. I thought that maybe I had uh, flight controls um, on the Xbox controller, that it was mapped to some flight controls. So I thought maybe when I was going into the cam for whatever reason, that it was then picking up uh, Xbox controller 
input to nose up. But I went back and looked at the mapping, and I did have some flight controls mapped to that Xbox controller, but I deleted them all. And it still does it. It still pitches me straight up. So that's not the issue. I, I, I think it's just a bug. But hopefully they'll get that fixed. If there's a new patch coming out in a day or two, I'd like that to be one of the things they fix. You know, there, there are a lot of autopilot issues that you, know, you still got to watch and, and, and it's still a problem. I can get I can get through most of those though. And at the end of the day, if you want to fly, you still got to fly the plane. So, you know, worst comes to worst, I can at least turn the autopilot off and just fly. Although the autopilot is nice and convenient and I cannot fly from outside the plane. I am just terrible at that. So, if I want to sit out here and look, I really got to put it on autopilot. Just kind of admiring the clouds, the fog, and fly through it. If there's any one thing I wish they would get added to the game quickly, is replay. Flight Sim really needs some kind of replay functionality. And not only that, but it's it's kind of selfish request on my part too. Um, I would like some kind of full flight replay functionality. Uh, if you've seen any of my other videos, I like to make uh, commercial aircraft, uh, commercial flights, and jet lighters just from the window seat. And I really can't do that without replay or without the ability to get into a plane somebody else's plane and sit in a seat and, and basically report neither uh, one will work for me but right now I can't do either I never played Flight Simulator X I understand it had a replay but it was only like a 10 it only looked back about 10 minutes so I'm hoping that if they do add a replay functionality here that it's going to go back. It's going to look back longer than 10 minutes. Hopefully the entire flight. I know to keep myself occupied, just to have some fun, I'm going to do this. I don't know what airport that is. Where am I? Utica. By the way, I have other traffic right behind me. So those those lights out there, that must that's Utica Airport. I don't know if I can see it. There's traffic right behind me. I don't know if it's above me or below me. It's been a little jumpy as I pan the camera around. I don't tend to have that issue when I'm just flying around normally, but as soon as I start recording on OBS, it gets a little jumpy on me. I think some other uh content creators are running into issues as well with OPS. I 
I could look at those clouds all day. Big highway there. Um, again, not being from New York, I don't know what highway that is. Maybe a turnpike? Does New York have a turnpike? Anybody's out there and watching and knows. Put it in the comments. Answer that question for me. Thinking that's a quarry right off my wingtip there. It, it kind of stinks not having a, a drone cam because if I had a drone cam, I could zoom in. This camera has kind of limited functionality. To zoom in. When you zoom in, it zooms right into the aircraft, which takes up most of the screen. Here's a little airport. I do notice it gets stuttery on me when I look straight down. I don't know how clear that's going to be in the, in the video, but when I look straight down, it gets a little jumpy. shot. That's a great shot. I just noticed a little SD card inside of the Garmin.
some farm. I wonder how accurate they are. I, I'm assuming they just don't randomly place windmills everywhere, although I think in the first video I showed uh, there were some windmills just outside of Doylestown that I could see from the airport that aren't there. So I hope it just doesn't randomly place these around. But that's quite a lot of them. basically flying just right beneath these clouds. Kind of in them, but the bulk of them are just above us. And maybe it's not my imagination, but it seems like uh, when, you, when you hit the clouds, it gets bumpier. It looks like the plane rocks and buffets a little more. Flying through this one. I can't tell if it's my imagination or if that's really happening. Got some mountains coming up. We're getting closer to Glens Falls now. Looks like there's a lot less farmland and a lot more just woods. Yeah, behind us it's all farmland. And ahead, some farms, but yeah, it's mostly woods now, so this is pretty rugged land. Look at that circle is. It's like rock. It might be exposed rock. A few other spots. Actually, down below, that one on the left is probably exposed rock. The one on the right, maybe it's just shrubs. Not drawing in trees, but... It's swampy on the bottom left. And this is the this is the cool thing for me is you know, I fly around the world is that you know you, you see that transition like you just saw going from all the farmland now we're getting now it's more rugged it's it's just wooded and, and you're gonna see probably rock outcroppings and see some lakes up ahead. I'm fascinated by that stuff. I 
didn't say this earlier either, but if you're not too familiar with the geography, so we started off in Doylestown, Pennsylvania, and flew to Ithaca, New York. Ithaca is probably, <clears throat> excuse me, about 150 miles almost due north of Doylestown. Uh, now we're not traveling north so much as we're traveling uh, east northeast um, across New York State. And this is heading towards the Hudson River Valley. I think, and I'm not 100% certain on this, I think that Glens Falls is kind of on a, maybe the northern end of the Hudson River Valley. I think it's above Albany. I have to look at a map. Again, I'm really not too familiar with rural New York. The water effects down there. I love how you can see the shallows. Right above the wingtip, I can see through the water and see the the mud or whatever it is underneath. That's just amazing detail. That is eight terabytes worth of detail right there. Off the wing, left wing tip, you can see it on the curve of that lake that under the water. And like there are no farms out here. This is rugged wilderness. I don't even see any homes out here. There's a road. There must be there's something over there. A couple of buildings. Oh, there's a little town. Right on that lake. Another town down there. But again, these aren't farm communities. Get a little closer. so I'm not that far above ground level. I'll have to watch when I get up to this bridge.
big lake over there. That, I think. I don't know. Oh, hang on. Alright, so... My OBS is yelling at me that the encoding is getting rolled, so hopefully this doesn't get too choppy. See if I can pronounce this wrong. I'm sure I will. I believe it was great. Sacandega Lake. Sacandega, Sacandaga. Something like that. Never heard of it before. Big. I'm looking at the map of this. But it shouldn't be. I'll clear this hill, but not by a lot. As I go through the clouds, I don't know if I catch a lot of uh, rough air off of this uh, this hill. Maybe a lake up there. Look at that, it is. Looks like it might be bouncing around a little bit more. Oh yeah, look at that. I am going to assume that's going to have something to do with me just flying over that uh, that hill slash mountain. Again, I hope this isn't getting too choppy because uh, I'm getting a lot of messages about my encoding being overloaded. So as we go along, I'm going to try to figure out my uh, OBS issues and see about getting the, the best quality of the smoothest uh, video. I'm going to see if there's another error. It's really giving me a lot of them now. I, hope, I really hope this is running okay for you guys. It's going to be a learning process for me too. drop down some of the uh, some of the settings on OBS but I, I'll, I'll lose some detail I don't want to lose too much quality I think Lens Falls is just above the aircraft, somewhere over that a bend in the waterway up there. I don't know if that's an extension of the lake or if that's a separate river.
Now I know I'm going to be making a left turn here in a minute. If it takes me up towards those hills, they're pretty high. i got to watch. Hopefully it won't take me right towards them, but... Definitely keep an eye out. Turning shortly. Once I'm at Gosar, we're, we're basically on the approach. Looking at how we're approaching, it should bring those higher elevations just to my left. The highest of which it looks like it's going to be 3229, 3229 feet. I'm at 3500, so it should be good. Actually, it might be that field just above the left wing tip. That looks like the highest point up there. That might be about 15 miles ahead. By the approach plate, I really should be up to 4,600 feet, but as long as I can see and watch where I'm going, I'm comfortable. It's almost like it's I don't know what that is. If that's a uh, snow or clouds, the satellite imagery thought. Oh, I forgot to change the registration. Normally I make it a November 116 Romeo Mike. 116 was my address growing up. Romeo Mike and my initials. Which, by the way, is already taken. On the registry, I think it's, I think it's listed as an ultralight aircraft. So anyhow, whoever has November 116 Romeo Mike, I hope you don't mind me using it. I have a chance. I just forgot it this flight. Oh, looks like the yeah, looks like clouds for the satellite got they didn't yeah, they didn't attach those with a 
algorithm didn't pluck those clouds out. Seven miles to go. Once we get the ghost, I'm going to pretty much go inside the aircraft. I think actually, I don't know if that's Glens Falls there, I'm passing by. I don't know, actually, it might be over that bridge. No, I'm not sure. I'm not even speculating. I think it's at the low end of Lake George. I'm guessing maybe that lake up there over that ridge is Lake George. Once I make the turn, I'm going to start bleeding off some speed. First flaps will be uh, at 136. I make this turn at five guys, it's gonna pretty much line me up. Not perfectly, but it's a beautiful occasion.
and maybe get another 2900 it's opsy in four miles go back on the throttle a little bit too try not to move too much speed here That's the airport straight out there. So I'm right down to 2700. Flaps. the airport out there. Let me line myself up with it. I'm going to go uh, manual here. My plane. Very sensitive. Flaps. You can 
overshot the runway a little bit. And I am low. Get some speed up here a little bit. Alright, so I have flaps down, gear down. I just gotta get the plane down. Looks like over to the left. this is a runway or a taxiway. Yeah, I guess it's a taxiway. I got a little confused there. Uh, excuse me, sir. Yeah, you go that way. I'll go this way. I'm just find a random place to park. Alright guys, put the parking brake. And that was leg number two to Glens Falls, New York. Quite a beautiful flight and approach. Man, it's a gorgeous uh, scenery out here. I love it. And uh, hope you guys enjoy. And we'll uh, we'll kick it back up with uh, leg number three in just a little bit. Take care.